Hey guys, I am going to make a wild mushroom pot pie with some impossible beef stuff and a whole bunch of veggies. I'm just trying to clean out the fridge and I realized that I have like upwards of nine kinds of mushrooms that I'm probably gonna put in this pot pie. And this is one that could definitely be made vegetarian. I'm gonna put a little bit of bacon in it just cause I like animal fat and the richness that it brings. But hopefully it's gonna be a fun dish. Um, it's gonna take me a while, so I'll be hanging out for a bit. I'll answer some questions and uh, probably gonna open a beer here in a second cause it's Friday night. But I'm gonna point you here at the board. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you guys is my friends at Openel, um, which makes my favorite mushroom knife, uh, actually wanted me to try out a couple of their other knives. So they sent me one of these beautiful chef's kitchen knives, and uh, I've been sort of waiting to open it because I, I didn't really feel worthy of this knife. I mean, this, this is a really nice knife. It's got like a wood handle, uh, beautiful blade, but I figured I would, I would uh, treat myself tonight and take this thing out of the package. Wow, look at that. That is quite the blade. Shoo. Well, thank you. Thank you, Openel. Uh, if you want to buy an Openel mushroom knife, which is probably the one that you guys want, uh, you can get them on northspore.com. And if you get them on Northspore, you can use my Fascinated by Fungi discount code to save 10% on a knife. So that's pretty cool. I do I do really like the Openel mushroom knife. It's, it's definitely like my first choice of of knives. Um, you know, at first I was like kind of skeptical. I was like, when was this knife really better than the other knife? And over time, I've definitely come to appreciate it more and more for all of its features. The fact that it's fairly light, uh, the attached handle, or the, sorry, the attached bristles are, are really robust. Um, I've had other br brushes where the bristles kind of fall out, but the ones on, on Openel are really good, and the curved blade is really good. It stays sharp, all sorts of stuff. What am I doing? I'm getting the wrong, the wrong kind of mug here. Here we go. Okay. So, um, I'll start cooking in a second. I'm gonna start by cooking the mushrooms there. I'll show you guys too what, what I have on the board. Stop yapping at you so much. Um, but I'm first, well, I guess first thing I wanna, I'm gonna pour this beer. I'm gonna put this back down here. Uh, what is this? Sonoma Springs Duck Duck Juice. So it's a hazy IPA. This is a pretty good beer. Mm, nice head on that beer. Gotta love a beer with good head. Well, cheers. Happy Friday, guys. Mm. Okay, let's start processing mushrooms. I've got my, my cast iron on, just kind of sitting on low heat. Um, I gotta start melting all these mushrooms down, uh, getting the water out. So I'm gonna do a dry saute on the mushrooms and then I'll render in some bacon and I'll build the sauce up with some, some onions, some allium, uh, some carrot, potatoes. I got some frozen spinach. I've got, uh, I've got broccoli. I've got the Impossible Burger stuff. Jerry, Jerry just really likes the Impossible Burger stuff. So she, she jumped at the chance to buy some at the store. We'll see if it's as good as it is when they make it into a burger at Gott's, because I think that's where she's had it mostly. But uh, I've been into the Impossible Plant for work, you know, a year and a half ago or something like that. It's pretty cool guys. I uh, I got to know a couple of guys on one of their research teams. They were they were working on something that I can't really talk about because of the NDA, but I helped them find a solution that seemed to help solve the problem. And I think the bottom line was basically that. Um, this stuff was turning brown too early because it was getting oxidized. And so I helped them kind of figure out a parameter they could use to keep this stuff nice and pink. So if you guys don't know about Impossible Burger, it really is, I'm not trying to like promote the brand here or anything like that. I just think it's really cool. This is, it's a plant-based vegetable protein thing. Uh, but they use um, Picia yeast. So they've taken a plant protein that produces a heme molecule. So these are the heme molecules from the nodules on legumes. And the purpose of this heme molecule is to bind oxygen inside of those nodules uh, so that the oxygen isn't toxic to the bacteria in there that are fixing the nitrogen. And so plants have these heme molecules, legumes at least have these heme molecules in their nodules that they produce. So they took that gene and dropped it in picia, and then they used that picia yeast to express the, uh, the protein for impossible. And I just, it is like the coolest piece of food science, and it actually tastes pretty good too. So, you know, all of that is just, I'm, I think it's really, really neat. 
It's like our the future of our food. And then there's I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the company Myco Technology, um, which I'm something a company I'm hoping to work with more in the future. But they uh, they make sort of vegetable protein for places like Impossible, and they ferment it with mushrooms to increase the nutritional content. Because one of the sort of the rubs on the Impossible burger is that it, it's not really that much better for you than beef. You know, they put a lot of stuff in it to make it taste good. And when you when you gussy something up with that much food science, it ends up not being quite as healthy. <laughs> and they were trying to, that's fine, because they were trying to deliver something that was basically on par with beef. And they did. But if you can make it uh, mushroom-based, then you make the proteins more bioavailable, and you make it better. So, okay, I'm going to drop my hedgehogs in here, and here next sizzle. Um, i got a chanterelle I'm going to put in here. found this recently. Oh, this needs a little more washing. I'll be right back. Here, you guys can check out the hedges while I'm gone. Roll you over. Okay. Down you go. Hedgehogs. What time is it? It's like 7.45. I uh, got home late because I was up in the hills of Napa seeing what mushrooms are out there. I didn't find a ton, but I found one, one old Matsutake. I got, uh, I got a couple of cool hedgehog kind of mushrooms, sarcodons, hawk's wings, sometimes I call them. Uh, one flocularia. What do you want me to wash the knife for? Oh, I guess I took it right out of the package, eh? I should probably wash it. Good point, good point, point taken. <laughs> I forgot. All right, sorry. You know, it's just hazardous to, to cook live. You, like, forget simple things. All right. Knife is washed. Yeah, that's a good point. You never know. It's, something comes from the factory. It could always have a little bit of residue or polishing chemicals or something on there, and it's always a good idea to wash it off. Okay, I know my, I'm sure my mom watched that in horror as I took it out of the package and cut something without washing it. Thanks, guys. Okay. So, we got our shanties. I'm just going to cut nice, big, kind of rustic pieces here of chanterelles. Let me make them a little smaller. This guy's pretty thick and dense. These, these shanties can actually be almost overwhelming when they, you get a really big piece in your mouth like that. So, I, yeah, I kind of everything wants to be like ground beefish size. But I like to keep some texture in the mushrooms too, because if you, if you just cut your mushrooms too small, you really get texture out of them, and like a lot of the the umph that mushrooms deliver in food is is their sort of meat like texture, and you know when you're cooking beef, I guess when you do like ground beef and chili, you want it to reduce down to nothing, but a lot of times you want some texture from that meat. Okay, what else are we gonna put in here? In here, I rehydrated some black trumpets and some Helvella dryophylla. So this has a really funky kind of morel, forest floor aroma. Um, this is good stuff. This will be bring a lot of umami to the party. Uh, so showed you the impossible beef. We're going to do just some really basic, you know, pot pie ingredients, onions, carrots, potatoes. Um, I got a little bit of lion's mane here. I'm going to put just a little bit in just so I can say put some lion's mane in. So here's a little lion's mane I picked yesterday. I might have let it go a little longer if I realized it was going to rain for like two days in a row, but say la vie. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> When I picked this, I thought it was going to be dry for like 10 days. So, so you know, I'm going to just cut off this little bit. You can see the inside. It's a gorgeous little lion's mane. Okay, so this is some kind of ginger hairs on it. It's getting a little dried out, which is why I picked it. Give it a wash. And I'm going to shave, shave this mushroom just a bit and have all the kind of brown, orangey, Orangey hairs, they can be a little bit better on a heresium, so I'm just going to kind of shave them off. You can do that at home too. If you're growing a heresium and it gets a little, a little dogged, a little uh, toothy on the outside, long in the tooth. There is a point at which like a long toothed heresium is just like not good anymore. Um, but you know, that's that's in the eye of the beholder. I've eaten mushrooms that other people would probably leave behind, but I really like mushrooms and you know. 
there's always a way to kind of salvage them in a culinary sense. So, speaking of a culinary sense, while I've got people listening to me, uh, I've got a live interview with Brandon Sad Poppy, who's a phenomenal TikTok chef. Uh, I think he's down in LA, and you know, previous to the pandemic, he was just like working in restaurants, being a restaurant drone as as one does. And then because of the pandemic, he like got fired and had to go home. And he just started making like really, really awesome cooking videos at home. And uh, I've been wanting to like bullshit about food since I first saw him because one of my like realizations years ago was that I could never afford to eat in fancy restaurants all the time, but I could learn how to cook like a chef at a fancy restaurant. And so I embarked on my quest to kind of learn how to cook restaurant style food. And I definitely don't cook restaurant file food. I, <laughs> my dishes are way too improvisational and sort of creative um, to ever make it onto like a restaurant menu because I'm just cooking with what I have on hand. I'm, I am not, I really don't, there's no master plan here. I'm just kind of taking random stuff out of the fridge and seeing what happens. And, you know, frequently I'll start a recipe and kind of not know where I'm going to end with it. Um, even this, I was like driving home thinking about it. I was like, oh, I know I had some like, you know, these like, these are like, I don't know, 50 cent or dollar biscuits from the dollar store kind of thing. I was like, well, I have these in the fridge. What can I make with that? And I knew I had all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, maybe I like make biscuits and gravy. And I was like, oh, what if I like take the biscuits and gravy and literally flip it on its head and make it into a pot pie? I'm like, boom, that's dinner. So that's, you know, that's how my brain works sometimes. Right. Nice thick carrot. Um, so here's one of my kind of. I know I'm not big on necessarily peeling carrots and see anything that wrong with the outside of them, but I'll do this. And my very nice sharp open all knife is very good at doing this. Just kind of scraping the outer layer off. And I'm sure someone's going to tell me this isn't good for the knife, but like whatever, I can sharpen the knife. It's fine. It's brand spanking new. Look how good it is at this. Oh, what a beautiful knife. Thank you, Open O. Okay. Do, 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 do. My mushrooms are just quietly simmering behind me, sweating off their liquid. Uh, Do I have any other fresh mushrooms? No, I have a bunch of, I have a bunch of bluets and, um, Oh God, what else? Oh, there's some amanita. Okay, I won't. I won't put the amanita in this because Jerry doesn't want to eat amanitas. Maybe I could sneak it in. She'd have to actually watch the live to know that I cooked with it. Shh, could be our secret. So I have a grisette amanita. It's an, it's an edible one. It's just uh... when I started mushroom hunting, I very resolutely said I will not eat any amanitas. And then as I got more and more into mushroom hunting, I realized what good edibles Amanitas could be. And so I had to kind of revise my stance a little bit. But Jerry is still uh, in the no eating Amanita camp, which which I respect, you know. If you're going to make a mistake with, a, with an edible mushroom, uh, you don't want it to be an Amanita because you could well die. <laughs> um, apparently there are some therapies coming out that might be sort of effective, like a milk thistle thing, something like that. And there's a there's a test that's coming out soon too, like a diagnostic antibody test type thing, where you can um, do a very quick test for whether or not something has um, has amatoxins in it, which will be a huge deal. There's a cool company, Ama, Amatox or something like that. I'll I'll do a story about them at some point soon. Um, they make a a quick diagnostic test for amatoxin. And it'll be really cool for like home scientists too, citizen scientists, people who can go out and collect mushrooms and just kind of test, have a robust test as to whether or not am toxins are in certain species. And it's not going to be quantitative; it's just going to be detective. Um, but you know, maybe someday we'll get a quantitative one, and then we can really start asking some interesting questions about am toxins. If anyone who doesn't know what an am toxin is, they are proteins that bind irreversibly. Uh, peptides that bind irreversibly to proteins in your liver, and they stop all RNA production. So your basically your liver function ceases ceases to function. 
because <laughs> you don't have any more RNAs, uh, and you get very sick, and then you get slightly better, and then you die. So it's a it's a good thing to avoid amatoxins in your life, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to jack the heat up a little bit because my mushrooms are sweating, sweating, sweating. Um, let's see. Okay, I diced my carrots. Oh, if I had a little bit of celery, this would be a full mise en place, but I don't mean mise en place, I mean mirepoix. I'm doing mise en place right now. It means everything in its place, so I'm just trying to get all my ingredients prepped. But I usually do this off camera, but I'm, uh, the mushrooms take a while to cook down, so I'm just kind of doing everything at once here. I'm going to take a little bit of bacon here. Uh, and I know maybe this defeats the purpose of using like impossible meat. Uh, if I'm putting bacon in this, but I don't care. I like animal fat. And if for anyone who's watched me cook, you'll notice I, I use a little bit of animal fat or meat products in a lot of things I cook, but I don't use very much. And I'm really just kind of using it for the flavor. It's an accent rather than like the main event. And and I like that. I like, I have no problem with diets high in animal fats. Um, I have like a Northern European descent. And so like dairy doesn't bother me. Uh, uh, you know, I like to think my body may actually need animal fats, or it seems to like them. Um, you know, granted, I could probably have bought better bacon from like a better producer, and that's you know, that's something I can always will always strive to be better about. But, but we'll get things going here. So I'm gonna, whew, I'm gonna drop this bacon into our pan, and maybe this is this is the point where you guys will start to see the pan instead of what I'm doing. We forged a knife from scratch, that's pretty cool. Okay, so whoop, over to the pan, Here you go. Okay, there you go. And we'll drop, oops. Drop our bacon here. Start rendering that out. my knife off here. some bluets, these are blue, I mean purple mushrooms, they cook down, it's uh, if you want to see a video of me talking about bluets, I posted one last week, um, here's a little flocularia, we'll toss some of that in because it's tasty, we're just putting in a lot of kinds of mushrooms in here, but I am carefully, I am not putting in the uh, amanita that I have here, but I will put in, I will put in these guys, these are the lacaria, actually this, yeah, lacaria, that's what I posted today. Lacaria amethysta occidentalis. Those are edible. They're not like incredible edibles, but they're they're edible. And there's going to be a lot of stuff in this, so I don't know if you'll be able to taste every individual mushroom anyhow. You'll be able to taste the bacon and onions and all the good stuff that's going into this. Okay, you know I'm going to just a hint of uh, oil to get going as well. This is the last of my, like, I made sort of a seasoned oil uh, last weekend for part of my halibut, or fish wrapping thing, fish and prosciutto and, and uh, potato wrapped bass is what I made for Valentine's Day, and that's the last of the oil from that, so. I'm a really big fan of, proponent of cooking meat and mushrooms together, too. I think mushrooms... Mushrooms have a great sort of porosity, especially when it comes to fats. They really suck them up nicely and make sure that dishes aren't greasy because the mushrooms kind of hold the fat for you. Uh, they also help you digest the fat because mushrooms add a lot of fiber to fatty foods. And that slows your digestion down, slows the way the fats move through your system. And actually, I think it's a much, much healthier way to consume animal fats is with, with mushrooms. I think that's a huge thing that people are missing from popular lore on nutrition. Um, 
I don't have a ton of evidence to back that up. That's based on some feelings and some anecdotal stuff, but from a scientific perspective, it makes a lot of sense to me. And, you know, I, I don't know anything. I just have a PhD in, in biochemistry. So what do I know? I am not a nutritionist, though, but I, I do have some, you know, understanding of human physiology and metabolism. Although, I'll be honest, I know yeast biology and metabolism a lot better than I understand humans. So I'll just put that out there. I hear a lot of the time, too, people tell me that they're allergic to mushrooms, which I think is interesting. Because um, I've looked into it, and I can't totally figure out, like, is there's not just, like, one thing that gives people a mushroom allergy. Uh, there is a compound called ergothymine, which is, like, a, a fatty... Um, ergo is usually like a, a fatty group, and, like, thymine is, like, a amino acid. Um, and mushrooms have some unusual amino acids that mammals don't have and plants don't have. And I know that some of those amino acids can potentially give people kind of a weird reaction. Um, some mushrooms also have quite a bit of oxalic acid, which breaks down with heat, which is why it's important that you really cook your mushrooms well. Um, a lot of people don't recognize that fact. And I've gotten multiple messages from people. Uh, who have said, you know, I bought these mushrooms and I put them in a stir fry and I got sick afterwards. And I'm like, well, that's an edible mushroom that you bought at the farmer's market. But the way you cooked it just, you know, quickly in a stir fry was not uh, enough to break down, you know, some of the stuff in the mushroom, whether it's chitin or other molecules that might be, you know, oxalic acid that might be giving you trouble digestion wise. Um, or, you know, some people are just sensitive to mushrooms. Uh, particular mushrooms too. You know, even people I know who are very accomplished mycophagists, phagists, whatever, they eat mushrooms, uh, have gotten sick from particular mushrooms and they're like, you know, they got really sick and they're like, I'm not eating that one again. You know, they have no interest. Um, you know, most mushroom hunters have at least one story of not feeling so well after eating something. Uh, I do not, and I'm I'm sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop because I feel like my day will come. I will eat something that doesn't agree with me. I felt like vaguely nauseous after eating things before, but like that probably had more to do with how I cooked it or like what else was in the dish than the actual mushroom itself, or or just how I was feeling that day. Chicken in the woods is, is the big one that gives everybody problems, um, and that one has a lot of oxalic acid, so. It's really important to cook your chicken in the woods well. That will help. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a bunch of onion and carrot here. I'm gonna start really cooking this down, get these nice and soft, and then I'll build a sauce and a gravy on top of this, and then I'll coat it in biscuits, and then I'll pop it in the oven. Ooh, speaking of the oven, I'm gonna turn that on. Uh, what do we think, 375? What does it, what does it can say? Biscuits, 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 cheap ass biscuits. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Instructions. 350. 350. Okay. 350. Start. Oop. Oh, phooey. I've <laughs> there was something else I wanted to cook before I put uh, put all this veg in here. I'm gonna put in the Impossible Burger. Although I have no idea how long this stuff needs to cook or like how it browns or anything. Um, but you know what, we'll find out. Here's some some fake meat substitute. It smells all right. It does smell great. It smells all right. Ooh, ooh. Well, it doesn't quite feel like meat. You know, they put some like things in here to make it look like it has texture. Interesting. It's very, um, kind of moldy and doughy. It feels like plant protein. So, whatever. We'll put some in. Jerry loves this stuff, so we'll give it a shot. And I, I like I like the company. I love what they're doing. Um, if anyone has a chance to listen to their CEO, Patrick Brown, he's like a professor at, at Stanford. He's a super impressive guy. And has some very forward-thinking ideas about what we can do to combat climate change. And one of the big ones we can do is everyone eat less meat. Although I think I fundamentally disagree uh, on 
the concept of how we should eat less meat because my assumption is that everyone should eat less meat and eat more mushrooms um, and not necessarily look to plants to fill all of our needs because plants just can't fill all of our needs. Plants are not uh, animals and mushrooms aren't animals either, but they're a lot closer to animals in terms of their nutritional profile. So I do, I personally think that mushrooms will be, we don't necessarily need food scientists formulating, you know, new and better mixtures of things. We just need more mushrooms, you know? I'm gonna talk about Mario. Um, do I, oh, hey Andrew, what's up man? Do you know anything about bioreactors that use to produce this stuff? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I can't say too much about like particular brands and stuff like that because the NDAs, but um, I probably already, already said too much about Impossible, sorry about Impossible earlier. earlier. I'm, I'm not sure if people are supposed to know what I said, but it's okay. It's in the news. Somebody, somebody like, I think Impossible was being really cagey and secretive about what, what their expression system was, and then someone just like sequenced their burger and was like, you used Pickia. And that was like my guess when the first time I went in there. I was like, oh, are you guys using Pickia? Because that's like the standard yeast expression system. And uh, they all looked at each other and got super nervous and then told me I like couldn't be there. So, whoops. That's the problem with having a PhD. Sometimes you know too much. Too much. Um, for anyone who wants to know more about me, you can go check my website. I have a whole about me section and like a bunch of podcasts I've been on, interviews I've done. I answer a lot of the questions you guys have. Um, there's even an article from UC Davis, an alumni article. That's pretty cool. Um, Andrew, I don't know if you're still on here, but remember that grad student center that I was working on uh, for like years? They finally built that and they're opening it and they're gonna open it like, or I guess next Tuesday I'm gonna go in and film like a bit for UC Davis about the grad center. And I think that's really cool. I hope, I hope you think it's cool. Um, they're gonna have like ping pong and stuff in there too. Uh, I don't think there's a bar. We we fought hard for a bar, but no bar. <laughs> uh, okay, I need garlic and potatoes, and we got more things to chop here. Um, so Ang style, I'm I'm not gonna be looking at the chat, but I appreciate you, and happy birthday, Andrew, as well to you. I know I missed actually calling you yesterday. I feel bad. Sometimes posting about it on social media doesn't mean as much as just calling that person. Whoops. Man, this knife is like really nice. It's such a noticeable difference when you get like a really nice sharp knife. Um, and you have to be more careful with your fingers too, because sometimes you get like a little complacent if you know your knife is pretty dull. You're like, I'm not gonna cut myself unless I go really hard. And, um, yeah, you can you can really mess yourself up there. Okay, so I'm gonna drop some garlic over there. I'm gonna whack up my potatoes too. Hi, Tiger Paw. Meow, meow. She's gotten very vocal in her old age. For anyone who knows my cat, she's vocal anyhow, but she's like extra. She is so extra now. Um, so here's a hack. Potatoes, I microwave them. Quick blanch. I know Andrew knows that one because I incessantly beat it into him. Every morning I'd come over and he was like, oh, I'm making hash browns. And I was like, did you blanch your potatoes? And he was like, no, what is that? And I was like, oh my God, this is going to take forever. Hash browns will never be as good. He's like, chill, bro. It doesn't matter. And I was like, no, it does matter because I'm, I'm not exactly Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, but I'm like kind of a dick in the kitchen. Uh, I want you to do exactly what I want you to do, and if you do it wrong, I will yell at you. Again, not as mean as Gordon Ramsay, but I am my own version of Gordon in the kitchen. So, I don't think Gordon Ramsay goes live and like, you know, talks about mushrooms, but I do. And I look more like Prince Harry than Gordon Ramsay. That guy's, meh, he's not princely. That's a weird flex, isn't it? Like, I look like royalty. I'm an idiot who, you know, has no business claiming that kind of thing, but uh, but there you go. My whole life, people have been like, you look like Prince Harry, and I'm like, oh, thanks, that makes me feel really weird. I don't know how to, I don't know how to respond to that kind of feedback, you know? I'm like, thank you, I guess. 
It used to be weirder when we were kids and he was like an awkward ginger child. Uh, now he's like handsome, he got a hot wife. So I'm like, that comparison feels pretty good. You know? All right, this Impossible stuff is cooking up like meat. It's got a really nice crust on it. I like to see that. We got crusts like that, see that? You know what that is? That's Maillard reaction. That's umami. That's good. I think that's, they probably really, really wanted that from their food scientists. They're like, our product has to crust like meat. And it does. Looks great. This is going to be good. Um, you know what? I'm gonna, did I put all? I did put all the impossible in. Okay. Oh, this has got to go in. Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to wash this. I got some broccoli in here. Hang on. I'm like hooked. I'm hooked in here because I got a mic on. So every time I move, I have to make sure I don't like accidentally knock everything over on my block. Or disconnect the mic and have it land on the floor. Okay. Do, 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 do. Best truffles. Um, I mean, the best truffles are going to be from like an importer who lives near you. Probably. Truffles are very time, time sensitive. Uh, honestly, if you live in America, the best thing to do might be to order some truffles fresh from Oregon, uh, rather than trying to get all the Italian ones. It'll just be more expensive anyhow. You know, Oregon truffles are pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, if you want to know more about truffles, go check out my interview with Alon Hagens recently, Temptress Truffles. She talks about foraging and truffle hunting and like how she got into it and all sorts of stuff. She's super cool. I'm really happy I got to talk to Alon and that I know cool people like Alon. And you know, it's Black History Month too, and I think she wanted to wait until February to like have our conversation because that was an important kind of thing to bring up. And you know, it is like this month is, especially right now in our like political climate, I think it's more important than ever. Uh, I know that TikTok has celebrated like black creators and they had like a special event yesterday that Alexis Nicole, Black Forager, was part of. And like Nicole's, Alexis is just like one of my favorite people on social media. She's so like alive and incredible and like knowledgeable and just like really, really awesome and relatable and fun. Uh, if you don't follow Black Forager, you 100% should. She is phenomenal. But so is Alon. Uh, Tempest Shuffles, you should check her out. Like, all, all my mushroom friends are, are really, really cool. And I feel incredibly blessed and lucky that I get to know all these cool people online. Okay, I'm gonna drop, drop some more green stuff in here. Um, you know, I think what I'm gonna do, those mushrooms did a pretty good job of soaking up that bacon grease. I want to build a little bit of a roux here, so I'm going to get I'm going to get some butter out of the fridge. I'll be right back. You guys listen to the sound of the pan. People use mushrooms as money. There's an idea. Mushrooms should be the foundation of society. I completely agree with you. Definitely. You know, I think that being a politician should, like, mandatory require you to do, like, a big mushroom trip so that people would, like, learn to fucking empathize with others. Oh. You know? Politicians could really really do with some real life empathy. All of them. Both sides. Although what like Beto O'Rourke and AOC are doing for Texas right now is really incredible. If you guys aren't familiar with that news story, um, you should be. You know, people are defending Ted Cruz for going to Cancun and being like, what could he have done? And you're like, well, sen a senator from New York and a person who wasn't even an elected official are doing more than Ted Cruz. Uh, who is an elected official, so. But I digress, I don't want to get into politics. I had some people say some really nasty stuff to me the other day over politics, and I just, I don't, I don't have time for that energy. I don't want to deal with it. You know, it's hard enough to like, get on social media and post all the stuff I do. 
so I don't need any extra reason to not want to engage. Um, okay, so I guess one or two I'm use this to help thicken everything up. So this is a, a pre-gelatinized flour. So I don't need to cook this flour quite the way that I would like normal flour. I'll still let it kind of like get on there and get a little rooey. Um, but it is it is a pre-gelatinized starch flour, which is cool. Okay. So, I don't remember how many kinds of mushrooms are in here. I'm going to have to like, go back and watch the video to find out myself. But I do, I do have black trumpets and helvella are coming up next. Those are the next set of mushrooms that will go in here. I guess I can stick them in now. They're probably rehydrated. So here's my black trumpets and helvella. Black broth. sticking components into this, like I have some sweet potatoes I want to put in here, but I think that like I'm going to overflow the pan here pretty quick and I still want to make room for all the biscuits. And this is this is going to turn into a gravy here before it goes in the oven. Um, and seeing how cold the pan is, I should probably, uh, I should probably put a dish in this just in case it overflows or bubbles out, but that's, you know, that's just going to make things taste better in the end. you guys this. Here are black trumpets rehydrated. These are craterellus species, black trumpets. And then here's helvella. So this is sort of an ascomyce like a uh, like morel. But these are two black fungi that I eat and actively like. Uh, and there's not that many black foods out there, so it's pretty cool to have, have black foods and very black uh, soaking liquid that I will put in this. So I think it will probably color our gravy, at least somewhat. I'm going to use milk too, so it'll be contrast and white, white and black all mushed together into mushrooms, right? Does that sound like a metaphor for anything? America, white and black and yellow and green and brown and orange and all the colors all mashed together into a big tasty gravy and mushrooms are the thing that unites us. At least it could be, you know? Sorry, I'm getting a little philosophical. Oh, well, you guys like that, huh? Uh, let's see, there's hedgehogs, there's chanterelle, there is lion's mane, there's a bluet, there is flocularia, there is wakaria, there is craterellus, and helvella. So however many that is. Oh, I'm going to put some porcini powder in this too, of course. Of course. Powder mix in here. I put porcini powder into like all my gravies and like really all, most of the things I cook I put porcini powder into because it's so good. I'm gonna put a little more. And I'm not gonna be shy about this. I want this gravy to taste real good. Real, real good. Yeah. So I'm gonna go in with a good amount of my um, sort of house seasoning, which is just Tony cherries too. I like some of the spice that it brings to the party. So I'll try to get this all, I gotta turn this down so it can stick a little bit on the bottom here. Um, and you know what, that's fine, because I'm gonna go ahead and deglaze. I got some cherry, cream cherry. Oh, hey, old sneeze there from sniffing that shisheries. 
Um, so here's the last of my ham hock din glass that I was cooking with over the weekend. So I'll put some of that in too. That's this stuff really rich. Has a ton of flavor. Has porkiness. Again, you could you could do this vegetarian, no problem. But. Ooh, well, that chili went right up my nose. Goodness. So this might be less of a pot pie and more of like a shepherd's pie with biscuits. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna go in with our our black liquid. Let's see how this what this does to the color. And then we'll hit this with our cream. Just the last little bit. And I'm just gonna dump it in. I'm not gonna be shy. Oh yeah. Cream is amazing stuff. I love cooking with cream. And this too, a little bit of milk. Okay, so now we try to scrape the bottom, get everything nice and deglazed. And get all of this incorporated. So again, if you want to do like a vegan vegetarian version of this, it'd be pretty easy. You just swap out like plant milks and plant-based fats. I'm already using the Impossible Burger, so that part is vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free. This is just sort of a, a basic method for pan gravy, but I'm just putting a lot of stuff in it. putting some barley miso in here as well for that little bit of extra background umami but let me taste it first because sometimes I like get carried away with seasoning and without even tasting it and I'm like that's important you gotta taste your food uh it's happened a couple times recently <laughs> I made something and I was like oh this is kind of over seasoned I was like ah oh, I didn't you know I just assumed it wasn't flavorful enough hmm that's good yeah I want to add the miso I do want to do that. So, here's my hack. I got miso. It's going to be hard to add to this liquid. So, I'm going to microwave it with uh, a little bit of liquid, a little bit of milk here, and then I'm going to start mixing in with a spoon, or a fork or something, and uh, then it'll be easier to combine the textures. But cheers, beer break. hiking around all afternoon on an empty stomach and I've had like a pretty good hazy IPA. I am on a cheap date, let me tell you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So here's our miso and milk mixture. It kind of looks like chocolate milk, except it's barley miso. So that barley, oh shit, oh, there's a little bit of stuff, I'll get it this uh, That barley miso will really bring a lot of extra umami and background tastiness to this, to this sauce. Miso is a fantastic addition to cream sauces, and really almost anything. Especially if you start playing around with different kinds of miso, and you know, red and yellow and white misos, and, and how they cook seasonally into different foods, and like the whole Japanese approach to miso is amazing. This one's made out of buckwheat, so it's not even your standard soybean 
uh, miso. You make a miso almost out of, ugh, out of almost any grain. Like I saw uh, Sean Brock making one out of bananas, which which is bananas. Oh God. Sean Sean Brock is so cool. He does he does such cool cooking. You know, someday, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Brandon, who's like a food hero of mine, Sad Poppy, on uh, on Monday on Instagram Live. But like someday, I hope that I get to like talk to like the high echelon, like crazy chefs of the world, like. Like Sean Brock and Rene Redizepi and like the people who have just been like such inspirations. Um, who knows? We'll see. I would. I'd love that. Uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar too with Harold McGee. He has wrote the book on food and cooking, which is like the bible of food science. Uh, and he's given a talk for the Mad Feed, which is Rene Redizepi and Magnus Nielsen something, a uh, Swedish guy. Finland? I don't know. Never mind. Madfeed. Go check out Madfeed. Um, Harold McGee is talking on Monday. And it's going to be an awesome talk about what he calls the Osmocosm, which is like the world of volatile aromas and smells. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a, little, I'm a little stuffed up from being out in the cold. Oh my gosh, this open L knife is a dream! Yeah! I've been plowing through my green onions from my garden with uh, with my normal knife, and it just never quite cuts all the way through them. And this thing is perfect. So, I gotta love a nice sharp knife. You know? There's a lot of vegetables in there, and a lot of mushrooms. Okay. What do we got next? We're doing our biscuits. So, like I said, I've got like, I don't know, nine kinds of mushroom and like all sorts of fancy stuff in here, and I'm about to put like dollar store biscuits on top. So, that's how I cook. <laughs> Woo! It popped! This is my favorite thing as a kid, just like waiting for a little biscuit can to pop. Okay, so, um, I may also do an egg wash on top of these biscuits. Let me turn this off. And how many biscuits do I have? Let's do a little bit of planning before we start laying everything down. I probably probably need two things of biscuits to cover this whole thing. But, you know, whatever. We'll, we're just going to do it. It'll be fine. It's upside down biscuits and gravy. Uh, you know, I guess the thing I've seen people do... Maybe I should do that. I'm going to do that shit. Okay. That's what I should have done. You cut them up into smaller pieces, thus you increase the surface area. And that is something I should have done before I put a bunch on there. So, let's see, can I, can I take this off and cut it up anyhow? Do, 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 do. This sort of works. <laughs> No, no, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Okay. I got a little too gooey. So, we'll leave the other ones in place. This is, it's modern art. It's food, you know? I'm, I'm avant-garde cooking here. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't look quite as fancy as it might in, uh, in, a, in a real fancy restaurant, but it should taste good. I'm into it. Hopefully you guys are into it. This is home cooking. This is how I do things. All right, I get all these biscuit pieces on here. I'm put a little cheese on top. Would that be would that be overkill? I don't know, man. I like cheese on things. Who doesn't like cheese on things except for? vegans and people are lactose intolerant. I'm not.
couple of mixed Italian cheeses over the top here. No egg wash, but just cheese. Okay. Well, guys, this means we're nearing the end. We're going to put this guy in the oven. So, pull back here. Move it. A mushroom continent. Well, you know, Pangaea would have been one gigantic mushroom continent. And they can, like, trace a lot of the, the roots of uh, mushroom genealogies to, like, Pangaea when everything was one continent. And mushrooms have been around a really long time. Um, that's part of the reason that, like, people always are like, oh, what mushrooms grow in my area? And you're like, well, most mushrooms grow everywhere. Like, there's a type of mushroom, there's different species everywhere, but there's like the same types of mushrooms grow all over the planet, because they have been around for millions and millions of years, back when Tangia was a single landmass. Oh, okay, this is, whoa, this is heavy. Woof. Okay, we're gonna bake that. Try baking that for like, I don't know, let's say like uh, 15 minutes. It's probably a good amount of time. Oh, 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 kitchen timer. There we go. All right. Boom. Okay, guys. Well, let me see. I'll hold you up. Hey there. It's been fun. Uh, I don't know if anyone that I know in person is still watching, but hello. Um, it's been fun. I enjoy doing live cooking. I want to say thanks again to OpenL for this cool knife. Um, it's very sharp, very nice. Uh, yeah, you can find out more about my cooking or about me on my website, fastingbyfunga.com. I've got answers to lots of good questions on there. I've got some cool mushroom t-shirts. Uh, I'm on all the social media platforms. Just search Fascinated by Fungi, you'll find me. Uh, I have a Patreon, so if you want to ask me questions about food or how to make the recipe, you just saw me made and you just saw me make it, so what do you need a recipe for? Um, yeah, it's been fun. Hope everyone has a good Friday night. I will post some pictures of the finished product when it comes out of the oven. Bye!